Good morning. Welcome to our worship on a beautiful Sunday morning. There was no wind today, so that's kind of a plus. We've had lots of wind lately. Just a few announcements that I have. Yesterday we had the funeral for Janice Hunt here at the church. Um, and the flowers that are here in the front of the altar from that funeral. Also, last weekend we were Robin and I were at the Synod Convention. Um, it was a it was up in Watford City, a great big place up there, huge building. Um, it was good to be up there to see some of our seminary friends that we went to school with. However, there's getting less and less of us as we age. Good morning. This Thursday we do have Bible study again at six o'clock. We are going to be looking at Leah, who is it from Genesis. Leah was not a physically attractive woman, and she carried the added burden of having a notable, beautiful sister. Yet God, who looks beyond appearance, blessed her with the gift of many sons. So we're going to learn a little bit more about Leah and some of her struggles and do some question and answer. It goes from six to seven. I try to only take an hour of your time, but it's fun learning with others. Thank you. Hi, it is the Youth Rummage Sale Week. We are going to be setting it up after um, church tonight, so any youth are welcome to come help and start raising money for different events and fun things to do. Um, anyone else who is willing to help a little bit this afternoon, we'd greatly appreciate that. Um, donations can be brought to the church um, Monday through Thursday this week um, during the day from 10 till 2 or in the evening from 5 to 7. And if you those times truly don't work out well for you, um, you can give me a call. Um, the actual sale is this um, Friday from 8 to 5, and Saturday from 8 to 2. So I hope you guys come and shop also. And I'm hoping a lot of the youth come and help um, to make it a big success. Thanks. Good morning. I have a few announcements on some events that we are doing this summer. First is the Larks game. July 16th is a Tuesday, and I have a sign-up sheet in the back if you'd be interested in coming with us as a group. Tickets are either $25, all you can eat, a hat, and I'm going to bring a bulletin, and if you meet with me, we can go get um, bleacher backs so that the bleachers aren't so hard for you to sit. Um, there's also um, $15 tickets. That is a, a reserve seat as well, and a hat. And if you come with me at the bulletins, you can get that hot dog and, and chips to go with that, as well as a bleacher back. So it's a, a good evening out that we can have some fun and enjoy each other. And um, that starts at 5.30, the all you can eat. So sign up in the back. Um, you can pay later for that. We just need to know how many tickets to purchase from them. Also, we have in the back some sign-up sheets for the car show. We had a really good meeting the other night. We got some new ideas that will be fun for everyone. And, um, but we, and we have everything arranged. It's just that we need people to help um, things to gather the day of the car show. We're going to need a couple grillers, people to transport tables and chairs outside. We're going to be doing it in the parking lot over here. Car parking guides, bakers, people to help with food sales, cashiers, pop and, pop and water icers, onion choppers. There's something for everyone. So please help us out with that. I know it's a ways away. It's not until July 8th, and rain out day is the 15th. So if you can, uh, sign up on the sheets in the back so we know that we have help on that day. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Will the congregation please rise as you are comfortable and turn to page two of our bulletin for a brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of Your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love You and worthily magnify Your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves 
and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us have a brief silence for reflection and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against You in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved You with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of Your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in Your will and walk in Your ways. To the glory of Your holy name, Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for each of us. And for His sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn, You Servants of God, you'll find that on page 15 of your bulletin. Our service will continue with the apostolic reading found on page 2. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord.
We will sing verse 7 of our hymn of praise. The Lord be with you. Let us join together in the prayer of the day in your bulletin. All powerful God, in Christ Jesus Christ, you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 130. Please respond in the bold print. Out of the depths, I cry to you, o Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, Lord, who would Yet with you is forgiveness. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits. Your word is my, hope. my soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is for the Lord shall redeem Israel. Please be seated for today's lessons. The first lesson is from the third chapter of Genesis. Immediately after Adam and Eve eat the forbidden fruit, they hide from God. Neither takes responsibility for their sin. Instead, blaming each other, the snake, and even God. The curse on the snake was understood as a messianic prophecy by the early church who associated Eve's offspring with Christ. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid. Because I was naked, I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I command you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, and he will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Here ends the first reading. The second lesson is from the fourth chapter of Second Corinthians. Life in the present is transistory and cannot compare with the eternal home God has prepared for us. So we do not despair no matter what life brings, because we know that as God raised Jesus from the dead, God promises to bring us into eternal life. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, 
so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of the God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earth, earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Here ends the second reading. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the third chapter. Jesus went to his hometown, and the crowd came together again, so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first trying up, tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemes they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. The crowd was sitting around him and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. You may seated, we will sing God of Grace and God of Glory, hymn number 16, page 16 in your bulletin.
Let us all pray. Lord God, as You lived in this world, You showed love. You showed mercy. You even showed love to those who persecuted You, who ridiculed You. You always showed love to those around You. Help us, O Lord, to live Your example in our lives, to show love and to have mercy with everyone, even those that we don't love, that we don't respect, that we have differences of opinion with. Help us to to be able to live together in peace and harmony. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On the morning of April 15, 1865, Abraham Lincoln, the president, president who is most known for ending slavery in our country, lay dying in a small room right across the street from Ford's Theater where John Wilkes Booth had shot him. While he was laying there, the Secretary of War Stanton said the following words, Here lies the most perfect ruler of men that the world has ever seen. So what was the big secret behind Lincoln's way of treating people? What is interesting is that Lincoln in his early days frequently criticized people. He would often write letters publicly insulting and humiliating his enemies. But one of these letters would dramatically change the life of Lincoln. In the fall of 1842, he published a letter where he mocked a politician by the name of James Shields. The whole city burst out in laughter of that letter. As a result, result, the proud and sensitive Mr. Shields got on his horse, rode to see Mr. Lincoln, and challenged him to a duel. Lincoln had no wish to duel. In fact, he was against duels but he had no choice but to accept it if he wished to keep his honor intact. He chose his weapon, and they both met at the Mississippi River. Luckily, in the last minute, they stopped their duel. This episode was one of the most uncomfortable experiences in Lincoln's life, and it taught him a valuable lesson on how to treat people. He never again wrote an insulting letter, and after that experience, he never publicly ridiculed anyone. From that day on, he never criticized no one. When Mrs. Lincoln and others spoke bitterly about people from the southern states, Lincoln replied, don't criticize them They are just what we would be under similar situations. In today's Gospel, we read about Jesus' early ministry. He went to His hometown of Nazareth and people followed Him in large numbers. And in the crowd that day, there were people with very differences of opinions. There were those who had heard about his healings. And they were there that day looking for healing. There were people there who heard him speak in stories, teaching a whole new way of living to love and care for one another in spite of their differences. He taught to love everyone, even the despised tax collectors. And then there were the religious leaders who didn't agree with his teachings and were trying to get rid of him. And so there was a lot of confusion going on. 
And some were saying, he is out of his mind. And then there was his family who were there. They wanted to get him out of the public eye and to take him home. I think it is interesting to think if Jesus was with us today, what would we be saying about him? If he spoke to us about welcoming strangers, about loving others who are different from us, with very differing of opinions, wouldn't we to believe that he's asking us to do the impossible? To reach out our comfort out of our comfort zone and to do something that we don't believe in. How often do we believe that what Jesus asks us to do is impractical in the world we live in? In today's scripture reading, we hear Jesus say, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. As we think about our world today, we are too living in a confusing world, a time when there is much unrest, a time when in our country where a number of our leaders would rather criticize each other than to work together for the good of our people. Jesus urged unity among believers. People must learn to live together, he said. Listen to his words. Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. As free people in our country, we cannot afford to let our freedom die. As Christians, we are to, to follow the teachings of Jesus to live in harmony with others and to care for one another. We must love one another as God loves us, the Bible says. And as we pray, let us pray that we may be one as Jesus tells us to do. That there may be justice and peace as we live together. And we must get down to business and not assume someone else will take care of things. We must all pull together and listen to one another and work together for the good of all people. To care and to try to understand one another. We must love one another as God loves us. And so our deepest hope is to, to learn to listen. May we listen to one another in openness and mercy. May we listen to our own hearts in love and forgiveness. May we listen to God looking for direction and have the will to follow. And in this listening, may we find the wisdom to cooperate with one another with a healing spirit that longs for peace and harmony to make a better world. And peace is not where everyone agrees, but it is when we can respect one another in our disagreements and pray for one another and love one another as God loves us. Amen. Our hymn, When Peace Like a River, you'll find that on page 17 of your bulletin.
song. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed to um, declare our faith to God and to one another. Please rise as you are comfortable as we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace of the Lord with one another. Please rise, we will sing, Create in Me as our offering response. Let us all pray. O God, Your steadfast love never ceases, and Your mercies never come to an end. Bless Your church with leaders whose lives will reflect the abundance of Your compassionate love in their ministry. Gracious God, O God, You bring healing to the nations and peace to all people. Guide our elected leaders and all the people of our country that we would be moved to help those who seek freedom and justice. Gracious God, O oh God, You are the strength of all who seek You and the rest of all whose souls wait quietly for You. Comfort all who suffer with chronic pain and 
illness. We ask for your healing, that they would know the tender touch of your healing hand. Gracious God, O oh God, You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. Help the members of this congregation to share from their abundance of resources so that the needs of our community will be met equitably. Gracious God, O oh God, Your children cry. No cry that You do not hear and that You do not see. Touch the lives of those who grieve losses and keep us in communion with all the saints in Your eternal embrace. Gracious God, Lord God, listen now as we pray our personal prayers in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in Your mercy, hear us as we pray, living God. And in Your mercy, give us all good things for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us all pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn you'll find on pages 18 and 19, On Our Way Rejoicing.
One cold and blessed winter In days beyond recall A child was born to save us Born to save us all One cold and blessed winter Born to save us all Oh, bambino, mio divino, io ti vedo, que a tremor. Oh, bambino, mio divino, io te vedo, que a tremor. In days beyond recall, a child.
tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator wrote the book of the seven seals. Tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator wrote the book of the seven seals. God walked down in the cool of the day, he called Adam by his name, but he refused to answer, cause he's naked and ashamed. Tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator, who's that writing? John the Revelator wrote the book of the seven seals. Christ had twelve apostles, three led the way, he said, watch with me one hour, till I go yawn and pray, tell me who's that writing, John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing, John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing, John the Revelator wrote the book of the seven seals. Tell me who's that writing, John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing, John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing, John the Revelator wrote the book of the seven seals. Christ came on Easter morning, Mary and Martha went down to see, he said, go, tell my disciples, meet me in Galilee. Who's that writing? John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator wrote the book of the seven seals. Tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator, tell me who's that writing? John the Revelator wrote the book of the seven seals.
when the evil winds blow And the cold keeps me shaking When I'm stuck in a storm And I don't know what to do When the hard rain keeps falling And the clouds are not breaking Jesus gives me his hand And always pulls me on through When the heat burns my soul And the drought makes me thirsty When there's no water to drink And the rivers run dry When the dust gets too thick And the sun has no mercy Jesus gives me his cup And dries all the tears that I cry So I think Jesus still loves me When I stumble and fall He always is there Yes, I think Jesus still loves me When trouble surrounds me, he always answers my prayer. When the darkness prevails There's no light to guide me When the flames of the lighthouse go out And I can't see the shore When the night is so black I can't see the devil beside me Jesus gives me his lamp when he answers my knock at his door. So I think Jesus still loves me. When I stumble and fall, yeah, he always is there. Yes, I think Jesus still loves me When trouble surrounds me He always answers my prayer So I think, so I know Jesus still loves me When I stumble and fall, he always is there. Yes, I think, yes, I know, Jesus still loves me. When trouble surrounds me, he always answers my prayer. When trouble surrounds me, he always answers my prayer.
discouraged Take it to the Lord in prayer Can we find a friend so faithful Who will all our sorrows share Jesus knows our every weakness Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still a refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do Friends despise forsake you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there.
until we meet again till we meet till we meet till we meet at jesus feet